Are you really attracted to hummingbirds or have they been showing up a lot in your life lately? Or maybe you're a little scared of them. If so, then a hummingbird may easily be either a totem animal for you or, or some kind of power animal, spirit animal showing up for you. And you may be wondering what the meaning is, what it wants to tell you. So we're going to go um, with this video into kind of a deep dive into hummingbird and its spiritual meaning and uh, hopefully it will help to shed some light for you on this uh, beautiful animal and uh, what it might be trying to tell you. Okay, let's start with a little bit about the bird. Uh, hummingbirds are the smallest birds in the world and there are many species of hummingbirds. Most species are a little over three inches long and well under an ounce in weight, so very tiny. And pretty much everything about this bird is high vibration. They have a super fast wing beat when um, it's like from 12 to 80 times per second, and that depends on size and species. Typically, the smaller ones uh, have the, the more frequent wing beats. And that's the, the humming sound that you hear is actually the uh, sound that is created because of these really fast beating wings. The, they also have a really super fast heart rate. At rest, their heart rate is about 250 beats per minute. In flight, it reaches 1,200 beats per minute. And that translates to 4 to 20 beats per second, which is pretty incredible. So if you were to hold a, a hummingbird in your hand, then um, you know you would feel like this vibration, I'm sure. Their body temperature is also super high. Um, normal, like underneath the feathers, it will be at about 41 degrees centigrade, which is 105.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, they, hummingbirds even see in high frequency. They see in the ultraviolet range of the light spectrum, which is a really super high range of the spectrum beyond the human visible range. And um, energetically, this kind of invokes like the ultraviolet, uh, like the violet ray, ultraviolet kind of uh, light ray. And so again, this is really super high vibration um, that we're dealing with. Um, so they, they really literally are energy workers, and it does take a tremendous amount of energy to fuel a hummingbird given their size. Um, so because of this, they need a constant source of food, and their food is um, largely flower nectar. And again, this is a real high vibration. If you if you're familiar with flower essences, um, you know any of that floral flower kind of healing, there's this connection with that, um, almost an angelic connection as well as, um, you know, like aromatherapy, that kind of uh, therapy, uh, um, you know, healing methods could be associated with, with hummingbird. If you're looking for some kind of remedy, look into maybe the flower essences and sound healing as well, but we'll go into that in a bit. Okay, so they, they live on flower nectar, but they also eat a fair amount of small insects, uh, fruit flies, little insects that hang out in flowers, in and around flowers that I believe some species may, may actually, you know, hunt on the wing as well. Um, so the insects are actually a very important food source for hummingbirds, and um, they do need that for the protein. Uh, they do have a preference for red flowers, and we're going to kind of look at the color red in a bit because I think that is, is quite significant to this totem. Um, but before we do, I, I want to just mention their role as pollinators in the natural world. Um, this is just really important. This will be correlated to seeding ideas, like transferring ideas from, from one person to another. That is something that is kind of an important aspect. Um, you know, in terms of pollinating and letting things grow and 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 take form, uh, the the manifesting aspect as well um, is an important part of this totem. And some species have actually co-evolved with their preferred flower species, meaning that they have developed 
like the flower has developed a spe specialized structure and the bird has developed a specialized bill to feed on those particular flowers. And what that does is that the, the flower attracts these birds and they help to pollinate it just inadvertently um, in the process of feeding from these flowers. So it's this kind of partnership between the bird and the flower. Um, and so like because they eat nectar and they're so small they require like they have such high energy requirements they have to be feeding uh, like actively feeding like throughout the day very very constantly and a lot of species have developed sexual dimorphism which means that the males and females will be usually the size wise will be different sometimes the bill shape will be different so differences between males and females um, and what that is, and this is not all species, but some of them, um, some of them, the females are larger than the males. And this is thought to reduce competition within the particular species because there's like only so many flowers. And if maybe the males are preferring one certain kinds of flowers and the females other, it, it, others, it sort of extends the number of hummingbirds that a particular area can support. So, and there's mating behavior too that um, leads to some of these differences. Uh, the males will do these really amazing aerial acrobatics in a lot of species during courtship. And sometimes uh, it's advantageous to them to be smaller than the females because it, it makes them more, ag more agile. And finally, in terms of motion, most hummingbirds are migratory, and this is so that they can access the food sources. Uh, the, the rufous hummingbird and the ruby-throated hummingbird in North America are two examples that they go down to um, Central South America to winter and then come up here in the summer. So like where I'm at in Michigan, we do have hummingbirds. It'll be the ruby-throats ruby-throated hummingbird, but only obviously in, in the very warm months. And uh, I live pretty far north and they do get up here. So, but they can't keep up the high rate of activity indefinitely. Um, and nighttime is a challenge for them because it's several hours that they really can't see the flowers and, and can't feed. So they've developed this coping mechanism. They go into a hibernation-like state in the night and it's called torpor and it helps to protect them from cold they're they're um, they're using about 1 15th the energy but they can't really move it's sort of they, they hang upside down like a bat and I think it's probably to protect the brain uh, to bring the keep, keep the blood around the brain and it, it just lets them make it through the night just the slowing down so if you have a hummingbird totem, you might find that uh, you might have a lot of energy, but you might have periods where you need to just really slow down almost to a stop. Sleep might be really important to you. And, uh, you know, just making sure that you get the rest that you need. It, it, hummingbird people may be like uh, the kind of people who are on the go a lot. So that, that rest is super important. And you may have to kind of schedule it into your calendar in order to make sure that you get the rest and the downtime that you need. You need that. It's not like optional. It's needed. Um, okay, so looking at the, the colors of hummingbirds, they have iridescent feathers and uh, these can come in a variety of rainbow hues depending on the species. And some people call them flying jewels because they have these beautiful jewel tones, many of them. These feathers are, like I said, iridescent. They can appear to change color. They refract the light. It's really light play. So again, this is like this high energetic, uh, high vibrational kind of light, light worker kind of uh, a totem. So if the hummingbird is coming forward, you, you might want to look and see what are the main colors of the particular hummingbird that's coming forward for you. And there may be some healing insights there. It might be able to point the way to specific chakras because the different chakras have different colors associated with them. And I want to point out that like the, the 3D chakras are the familiar rainbow, red, orange, yellow, you know, green, blue, indigo, you know, whatever, blue, green, blue, violet. But then the, the, the 40 of the, the higher ascended chakras have a little bit different colors. So you might want to look that up or look up both. 
Um, and then there's also the sacred ray colors, right? The emerald ray and, and blue ray and so forth. So any of these may have connotations in healing work if a hummingbird is coming forward as a totem for you. So look into those colors and notice, observe which, if there's a particular hummingbird species that, that is showing up for you and, and what those colors are. Okay, so because they feed on flowers and because they are small, they can do this, they, they have developed an amazing agility and flight. They can fly in all directions and hover sort of like a helicopter. And they, they are like, there is an aspect to hummingbird that isn't all love and light. They are really like the attack pilots of the natural world, of the bird world. And um, they, they do, can be very, very territorial and aggressive, especially towards other hummingbirds. Um, and I mean, literally angry birds. <laughs> so if you're a hummingbird person, rage and anger might be an issue for you, okay? Um, they, they will chase away like all sorts of intruders. Usually with hummingbirds, it doesn't end up in an actual fight, but when it does, it, you know, they can't get injured and sometimes they'll, you know, even kill each other. It usually doesn't come to that. Usually it's just battle scars, uh, lost feathers, that kind of thing. But, um, but if this is coming forward as a, as a power animal, it is definitely something to be aware of. Um, it, in nature, in the hum, in the hummingbird world, if you are wanting to attract hummers to your yard, you want to avoid fights, that you want to make sure that you do everything you can to reduce the stress. And one of the things that can help is by providing more sources of food, so maybe multiple feeder, feeders or different patches of flowers to um, kind of reduce the scarcity because it's, it's actually this scarcity or fear of lack that is you know, makes them aggressive towards each other, right? They're trying to protect their territory, they're trying to protect their food source, and energetically, so if you're dealing with this aspect of hummingbird, if you're dealing with the rage, um, you know, and aggression, then we're looking at wanting to introduce stress, stress reduction techniques, breathing techniques, anything you can do to keep stress to a minimum. And also working with the root chakra. There's that red color, right? Because that's the kind of 3D color of the root chakra. Um, so going to the root chakra and doing healing work around that can help hummingbird people or people like if, if a hummingbird is coming forward, it may not be your your actual spirit animal totem, but it may be a spirit animal that's coming forward for a particular phase of life or something. Um, if like this would be more the negative aspect um, that it might be helping with in pointing out that, you know, let's look at the root chakra and look at, you know, what healing might need to be done there. Um, because of this attack pilot kind of um, capabilities that they have, um, again, they can fly in all directions. They can hover, but, and they have this figure eight pattern in their wings that allows them to do that. So figure eight, uh, the, the, the number eight, new, uh, numerologically speaking, has a lot to do with abundance. It's like the infinity symbol. So this abundance is also an aspect of hummingbirds and it's kind of related to the whole flowers and blooming, right? So there's, there's a positive aspect to this totem. And also they have a super highly attuned sense of vision. They actually have specialized visual processing centers in their brain, which is what helps them to visualize even when they're like doing really complex aerial maneuvers. So just like an attack pilot, they have resources, they've got specialized equipment to keep them highly aware. And that is super important because this attack aspect of hummingbird, it can show up in negative ways, but just like any aspect of any power animal, um, those shadow sides, they can be turned to good use as well, right? To, to, um, to light purposes. So we're talking here about awareness and, and, and like very high awareness and the ability to, it's a very protective ability, ability to see, recognize, and um, protect against 
anything that might be uh, threatening darker energies, anything like that, that might be that might be intruding past your boundaries. Okay, so boundaries, very, very important. Knowing what's yours, what's not. So this is, um, so don't see this aggression. If it's aggression, it might be pointing out that maybe you need to just kind of take stock of what your boundaries are or start paying attention to like what's mine, what's not, what's my energy, what's not. Okay, so if you're experiencing kind of rage, aggression, maybe it could be maybe taking on energy or um, allowing boundaries to be crossed when maybe it'd be better to figure out ways to assertively but not aggressively uh, defend your boundaries and that begins with recognizing where your boundaries are you know that visibility okay I mentioned the humming sound before and uh, some species have brilliant throat coloration as well um, so we're looking at throat chakra here for for hummingbirds as, as something to, another area to look at um, if you're doing healing work root chakra and throat chakra would both be um, you know, ones to look at. Uh, in addition to humming, they also sing or they make chirping sounds, depends on the species. Males of some species will actually gather together in numbers and groups, sometimes large numbers, to sing and dance for the females. This is a mass courtship display called a lek, and it's like the singles bar of the bird world. <laughs> um, so females do seem to prefer males who are good singers. And scientists think that hummers can hear far more accurately than we do, that they can discern sound patterns at rates that we can't even follow. So they've experimented with slowing down hummingbird chirps, and they found that there are often hidden songs that go by too fast for us to detect, you know, that we can hear just a little chirp, but they think that the hummers can actually hear a song, that song hidden within that. Okay, so all of this is pointing to, energetically speaking, we're looking at the throat chakra, we're looking at self-expression, and we're also looking at sound healing and music as a healing mechanism, as well as if you're looking at those kind of hidden things, the realization that healing can happen at levels undetectable by the senses. Healers have always known this. If you're looking at, say, Reiki energy that you can't see, you can't hear, but it's there and we feel the effect, um, you know, again, a hummingbird is a real kind of healer comes forward in a lot a lot of ways with hummingbird um okay one of the shadow sides of hummingbird aside from the aggression is inebriation or kind of drunkenness um if you've ever <laughs> with the hummer feeders like with the sugar water if that ferments then a hummer can actually get drunk <laughs> right and and this is the case for some people who are very very sensitive and have this kind of healing ability um sometimes addictions can can kind of go along with that because they're so sensitive that it's in, until you until certain sometimes it, it's easy when we're dealing with all these energetic shifts and especially before the awakening happens and we're not even we don't even know why we're feeling what we're feeling and it's easier to kind of just drink it away right um, or it could show up not necessarily in alcoholism but other kind of um, ways that we kind of get ungrounded okay so it could doesn't even need to be a, a a substance addiction it could be just ungroundedness and spaciness um, there is a, 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 a kind of an old wives tale that that hummingbirds don't have feet I, I met somebody once who, who who really insisted to me that hummingbirds had no feet and and I can see where the belief comes from because they they can stand still in the air they can hover but hummingbirds they really do have feet um, but that ungroundedness is an aspect of hummingbird to watch out for if you have hummingbird as a totem or if it's coming forward for you a lot right now um, watch the groundedness okay because you there again is going to the root chakra right so grounding very very important for hummingbird people and lastly I want to talk a little bit about the connection between hummingbird and spider so there is actually a predator-prey relationship between hummingbird and spider, and it goes both ways, 
Okay, so anytime there's a predator-prey relationship, there's interesting things that you want to look at with animals. But when it goes both ways like this, it's super interesting. There's a really very strong connection with between these two power animals. Okay, um, so they did a study, some, some researchers did a study in 1986 that they examined stomach, stomach contents of more than 1,600 hummingbirds, these are tropical hummingbirds, and I'm assuming hopefully that they were ones that died, you know, uh, accidentally or of natural causes. Um, that they were 140 different species, and almost 80% held remains of spiders or, or arthropods, okay? So the spider is a major, major um, food source for hummingbirds, but Hummingbirds are small enough, and, and hummingbirds actually collect, sometimes they'll collect the spider web, the spider silk, to line the nests, because their nests are so small. Um, but sometimes they are small enough to get caught in a larger spider web, and sometimes fall prey to the spiders themselves. So there's this really interesting dynamic there. Um, we're talking here, like, spider... Spider has this kind of vampiric archetype, so we're really talking here between light and dark, right? This this the quintessential battle between light and dark. We're talking um, kind of the vampire archetype, which is the Antichrist, right? And, and hummingbird coming in as this light worker, right? Which which um, you know counteracts this vampiric ener energy. But it's very interesting that it, it, it consumes it, right? And I kind of got this image the other day of a of, of spider that um, when, we're, when we're dealing with energy, when we're healing from negative energy, um, it's sort of like the reverse of the vampire archetype. It reverses it. So, spider, um, in its in its dark and its shadow aspect, embodies that vampire. It kind of just takes life and sucks it away, right? And it it entangles and binds. But what light workers essentially do is kind of the same in reverse. What we do is we kind of bind the negative energy so that it can't. You know do its thing you can't create harm and then in a way we feed off of it because we take our lessons from the dark right and it helps us to spin more light to bring more light into the world so it's sort of like this reversal so you can say that it's like the negative antithesis of the negative archetype right so hummingbird is one that helps to helps us to reverse the the any kind of vampire tendencies that are coming into our lives and reverse it so that instead of the dark preying on the light it's the light using the dark and transmuting it okay so just a very much very much a light worker kind of totem one that embodies joy and abundance and light in all sorts of ways but again it like anything else it's got its shadow side and there's going to be things that come forward um, you know for hummingbird people if it's your totem or if it's coming forward for you um, watch for the aggression watch for the groundedness and um, those those things will help to get back into you know the the, the more light aspects of this powerful totem Okay, so I hope that it has, this has shed a little bit of light on the meaning of hummingbird. And I encourage you, if uh, you've been seeing hummingbirds or they've been coming into your life, to spend a little time with this totem. You might want to journal with it. You might want to meditate on it. You might want to maybe dialogue with it. You can ask these uh, power animals, you know, what it is. Why are you here? What do you want to tell me? and uh, see what comes forward for you. So good luck if you have enjoyed this video. Please do like and I encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos. 
And in addition to the spirit animal meaning videos, I also uh, will upload uh, frequently like readings, spirit animal readings and so forth, just to help with uh, the, the, everybody's awakening process who is, you know, who, who is drawn to this channel, um, my own included, uh, just help with awareness of what may be going on energetically. And if you feel drawn to working with me, I, I do offer psychic sessions, readings, and energetic healing, spiritual healing sessions, spiritual coaching. I will leave the link to that below, along with a link to my Spirit Animal Awareness Oracle deck. Um, thanks again for watching. Very much appreciate your, your time today. And enjoy your hummingbird totem. Have a lovely day. We'll catch you again soon.